That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Firebird, the directorial debut of Peter Rebane, which uh, premiered at the 2021 BFI Flame London LGBTQ Film Festival, uh, where it went on a, uh, a large tour of uh, similar film festivals, including Frameline and Outfest and the uh, Moscow Film Festival, where I would have loved to see the... Uh, response to this film there. Uh, it is uh, the directorial debut, as I said, and uh, was written and produced by its lead star, Tom Pryor, uh, who I believe is British. Uh, it's set in 1977, uh, Soviet-occupied Estonia, and is based on a memoir uh, by Sergei Fedosov, who passed away in 2017. Uh, the name of the memoir, I believe, was The Story of Roman. Let me tell the basic story. Sergei is a soldier in the military and it seems like all young men have to enlist and serve for a period. So he does and we see him towards the end of his service being asked if he wants to um, stay on because he's, I guess, a good soldier. And he declines because his goal is to go to drama school because he's a homosexual. Concurrently, there is um, like, an, a, like a pilot named Roman who's been given a special like project or something. And because Sergei is approaching his final weeks of service, he's basically, like, given the task to attend to Roman. Like, be his assistant or something. Like, clean his, like, dorm. I don't know. But immediately they fall in love. <laughs> and it's your standard, like, forbidden love scenario. They get almost get caught several times. When finally Sergei leaves the military and goes to Moscow to start drama school. So it's important to know that the film opens with Sergei, Roman, and a woman named Luisa, like frolicking in the ocean. And it's clear that she sort of has an attraction to Sergei. And of course, Roman and Sergei are pretending to be straight. So a year later, now that Sergei's in drama school, Luisa comes to visit him in Moscow in Moscow and says, Hey, I'm getting married. Come to the wedding. And she's marrying Roman, his true love. <laughs> so Sergei attends the wedding. They sort of reconnect. Mm -hmm. And then we flash forward four more years. Mm -hmm. And Roman through his work is going to be stationed in Moscow. Like he'll have an apartment out there. So, of course, he looks up Sergey and tells him, like, hey, like, let's be together. Even though I'm still with my wife, still in the military, and have a kid. And these two fucking shack up together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess everything's great. Until a combination of things happen. One, Luisa shows up for the holidays. And that upsets Sergey because Roman doesn't want to tell her the truth. And Sergey and Roman are out, like, at a party... And another soldier catches them kissing. And it happens to be the soldier that filed a report on... Uh... One of those times when they almost got caught earlier in the film, it was through a mis uh, an anonymous tip, and this soldier was the one who gave that tip years prior. Pertaining to Roman, specifically. Pertaining to Roman only. So, now Roman's going to be found out. We see Sergei write a note and leave it for Roman in the apartment and leave. And it's clear that Luisa has found that note. Now she knows what her husband's been up to. Then we find out Roman was killed in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So Sergei goes to visit Luisa one last time. We're told that he never visits with her again. And the final shot of the film is at a point earlier on, Sergei goes to like a ballet. Mm hmm so at the end, we see him going back to that same ballet and sort of like daydreaming about old times. The end. Yes. Child, this shit was a mess. It, it was, was a mess. It was for many reasons. And <laughs> I was, I, I think my expectations were at a certain level because, you know, how the poster art and uh, how it's been received thus far on the festival circuit is being released on April 29th, 2022. 2022, courtesy of Roadside Attractions, which is, you know, a notable distributor. Uh, you read a review from somewhere. There. The, like, the San Jose Mercury News. 
That said, like the high production value, the quality acting, the the story that takes you places you didn't think, the I'm like, I don't see it. First of all, they're all speaking English, accented English. Very bad accent. Very English. bad accent. That, that goes English. in and out, especially for the lead, I think, Tom Pryor. Well, yeah, towards the end, it's just like he forgot that he's supposed to be Russian. Okay. Or Estonian. Then ugh. The CGI, specifically, there are several scenes, like three, involving jet planes. Mm -hmm. Because Roman is a... a Fighter pilot. Fighter pilot. That are, like, Sharknado level bad. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, like, ruinous, it as is, you would it say. Is, it is ruinous. Um, and then there's another one that I thought was a cheap metaphor, where there, there's a hand job going on in the water, which is probably cold, behind a <laughs> boulder, and uh, as... Climax is reached. We see that was laughable. two rockets shot off that look silly. And then you don't have to comment on people's aesthetics. And, mm -hmm. you know, especially these gay films where it's like, you know, Tom Pryor is a very attractive guy. And so is the person playing Roman. Mm -hmm. When I tell you Roman is wearing all of the makeup. Oleg. Uh, all of it. Zagor Whoever did his makeup. Zagoro Drive. And the cinematographer. Him. Like, I mean, don't they check like how it looks on camera? <laughs> It's heavy. Then, Sergei too, there's a scene where like they have just had sex and he spent the night and then we see him wake up. And I don't he's know supposed he, to be hungover because they drank a lot. He's supposed to be hungover. And he's all dewy and glistening. It's well, like, no, he he's dry. like fully freshly powdered with lip gloss applied. Like that was a joke. But the worst part, the worst part is when we get to that four years later. It's so it's supposed like, to be the early to like mid 80s. Yeah. yeah. They put a wig on Sergei. It's bad. You know how like Party City has to do like generic Halloween costumes so like they can't do the village people so they'll do like firefighter, Native American, construction worker. That construction worker wig is the wig Sergei's wearing. It's so bad that it took me all the way out. It's it's terrible and we get a long time of him and in it, it. Yes. It reminded me of this I think it was this bitchy film critic is Vincent Canby who was complaining about Delphine Seerig in the film Muriel where they gave her Liz Taylor's wig from Who's Afraid, Afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> a fright wig. Um, it, it's pretty bad. Okay, let me just go down my notes. So when Sergey and Roman first connect, because they've met, because Sergey is going to work for Roman, but the first time they kind of connect, they're like hanging out. Because Roman says, stay, stay, like, let's hang out. And they're drinking, and it's obvious something's going to happen. And something does, like, because they're both drunk, Sergei especially, and when he gets up from the couch, he sort of trips and stumbles. So Roman helps him. And then they sort of, like, stare longingly into each other's eyes. That shit was... <laughs> it's crunchy. It's real crunchy. It's, it's crunchy for sure. Uh, Who did we say looked like Kelly Mantle? <sighs> That was uh, somebody at some point in this film, uh, in the ballet, I thought. I think somebody in the ballet, yeah. Oh, okay, so then the ballet. Mm -hmm. First of all, it looks like it could have been one of the shows, like the movie Showgirls, like the show they're putting on. Mm -hmm. I felt like it could have been a scene from that show. Okay. Which was more interesting than this movie. Um, yes, I was like, can we please stay and watch this rehearsal? <laughs> Again, I have to say how much I can't stand when films are shot in like, like it's supposed to be another language, not English, and they speak English. And then everything's, like all the signs are in Russian. We even see characters writing, writing in, in Russian, Russian, but they're still speaking English. I hate that. It, well, it, I, I think because the actors are having a hard time navigating, one, the shitty script, and uh, having to talk, th there's a rigidity to it because they're overcoming this accent work as well, uh, which I think really hobbles the chemistry that is not allowed to develop between the two. Okay, leads. let's talk about that. So Roman and Sergey have no chemistry. So then you think, okay, 1970s, uh, Estonian military, Article 121 is brought up, which is basically like you can't be gay or you can, if you're caught being gay. It's like paragraph 175. Yeah, you can go to prison. So there's a lot of attention around like you cannot be gay. So then these two soldiers are attracted to each other and they're having sex, which we never see them having sex really. There's one scene where like one's on top of the other. And Thrusting, yeah. Kind of, kind of, and you see a little booty crack. But, so then you think one of two things. Either it's just this like physical thing that they get to satisfy and because of that they're like magnetic. We don't get that. 
So the other, the other option is they are like madly in love with each other. But we don't see that either. So I'm so confused. Like what did these two people have pulling them together that they narrowly escaped getting caught three times, mm -hmm. which could have led to prison time. And they still can't not see each other. And then for Roman to show up four years later, like after he's already been married with a kid, and then Sergey's like, yes, let's be together. When we see that in drama school, Sergey has made a little friend, another little attractive brunette man, who seems to be fond of him. Like what? What about Roman? And I don't know if it's because they're. I haven't read the memoir, so I don't know if they're honoring that. Uh, what uh, Fedosov initially wrote, but I would. I wanted to believe that at least probably Roman was doing things with other men in that four or five year interim. Well, how would Sergey know if Sergey? How wrote, would he know? Right. But also a film that's not committed to being realistic about it. Sure. I also think that the surnames that Tom Pryor wrote for many of these people, because he's in the film, he's Sergey Serebrenikov very notable uh, Russian filmmaker named Serebrenikov, or there's Colonel Kuznetsov, that's also a very notable Russian surname. Uh, um, the, uh, Kuznetsov, that was one of the actors in the Dumbledore film. Um, <laughs> and that the Colonel took me out too, because I kept looking at this man, and I'm like, God, he looks so familiar. Nicholas Woodison, he's a villain in the Pelican Brief, and he's in a ton of other stuff. Oh, I wrote down goon in the Pelican Brief, and I didn't know what that meant. Because it clicked on, God, he looks familiar. <laughs> like, I saw him terrorize somebody. Turns out it's Julia Roberts in the Pelican Brief. But uh, he, he's I could rewatch the Pelican Brief, uh, actually. The, the disc I have of that is so old that you have to flip it over halfway <gasps> oh. through. And that's back when Denzel wasn't kissing white ladies on screen. Oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's a scene after the first time Roman almost gets caught being gay. So he's stressed out. And then there's a scene where he's flying. And I got the impression that maybe he was so upset that he was attempting suicide because we're in a command center. That shit was so crunchy. Again, it was like Sharknado level. And then they're trying to convince Roman, like, land the plane, land the plane. And he won't. So, of course, as the audience were like, maybe he wants to end his life. And then Sergey helps they have to do something with like a net to catch the plane when that that shit looks so terrible it, it, it's like it's a step above certain indie gay films but and i'm guessing that they had a like a modest budget that they were able to stretch quite a bit farther by being in an estonian uk film product co-production uh but it's still not at the level it's like they should have just rewritten those parts or excised them altogether because they one they don't really add anything and it just it just highlights uh the lack of things they had on hand. So there's a major who is looking. There's a major in the military who's like, try, he knows Roman's gay. So he keeps trying to like catch him. Do we ever find out if he's gay or am I thinking of Citizen X? You're thinking of Joss oh. Ackland's character in Citizen X right now because we would just watched that. But uh, Also yeah. a film with uh, where Russian speaking English <laughs> that took me out as well. It, that is, But that is a fun movie. The, Again, hasn't aged well because of that either. Uh, but you get the sense that that's going on in the background because he's so gung ho about catching Roman. Uh, keep in mind that the KGB has received this report about him specifically, and when we find out who it is, it's one of Sergey's friends. At, I think it's at his now. birthday party where that kiss happens, and the and Sergey punches his friend, and his friend's like, "I didn't know it was you." Then how did you think this man was gay? Like, there's there's some kind of dots that aren't being connected there. Uh, that are interesting. And the the parts of the script that I did like, I would imagine are lifted from the memoir because uh, the, the montage at the end where Sergei flees that apartment, he the, in the letter he says, our love could only exist where there's no thought and no time. And like, that's a notch above the rest of this writing. Yeah. I feel bad because I mean, this review is a mess because we're just shitting on this movie. Um, you know, I... I think this feels like a lot... It feels like a lot of those late 90s, early 2000s gay films, Forbidden Love, not the highest quality, overly attractive people. In this in particular, it feels like... I don't know. This Tom Pryor, he is a nice looking man, so I'm not a hater, but like he's so wrong for this role. He does seem wrong. Like why not why are like why don't we have like Estonian, Russian people, whatever, speaking the language? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know like, because they're not it's not like these actors are famous enough to okay, I understand why 
this is where the audience is going to be drawn to because of these names. You, uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. The only good thing I can say is it does make me want to read the memoir. Which you know is more interesting. Oh, 100%. And the, and, the, and the good thing about the story is that I do you do see that there's a lot going on. And I'm sure in the writing of the memoir, we get a lot more. So I, I would be very willing to read it. But yeah, this... Just, just the wrong people telling the story, the wrong casting. I think it does a disservice to the woman playing Luisa Diana P Pozorskaya. Uh, she, she feels like she's lost, floundering, and some trying to be something authentic that this film isn't really allowing her to be. Um, well, and then she fares better once she's married to Roman. But the first half of the movie where she's just flopping around in the military, I think her accent work and acting is a little crunchy. I don't, know. I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm talking crazy, but... No, uh, it made me think... There's a 1990 film called Firebirds starring Sean Young and Nick Cage and Tommy Lee Jones, which is about... Because the Firebird is an unmanned aircraft. Oh. Which is interesting if you think of how this film and what it's trying to say. It's also... There's a, um, a Slavic myth about a bird that can have different meanings depending on when you see it. Uh, I, I wish that... this It's not intelligent to kind of enough to have those kind of subtexts, to it um and it also reminded me of a film i saw in berlin a couple months ago called brother in every inch about these twin russian brothers that are have very different skill sets trying to be pilots and just how that was presented and all the flight sequences are so much better than this <laughs> i don't know well i feel bad now uh what would you give it why do you feel bad well because you know it's like because we're shitting on a gay film. Well, no, not that. I mean, it's just more like I don't watch movies thinking, ooh, I can't wait to say I don't like it. Like, well, I well, same. But I was honestly shocked. Because the other thing, Joseph, you know, you like to multitask. And you're like, oh, did you put on a film that's in English? I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> that was another reason I didn't want to watch it. Because I had something to do. And I, and I was certain that it would not be in English. But surprise. <laughs> what and would you give it? It also does a disservice to um, Boney M's Rasputin. What would you give it? Uh, two. I, two. It's entertaining because I was like, we were laughing a lot of like inappropriately. So <laughs> sure, I would give it two as what, well. Once that wig comes on in the third act. Anything else? No. Listen to our podcast. Bye.